Your Excellency Dr. Fifian Balakrishna, Minister of Foreign Affairs of Singapore, colleagues from the media. Minister Balakrishna, dear Pak Fifian, welcome back to Jakarta. It's great to see you again after my last visit to Singapore in February. As I mentioned, Pak, for many reasons, there is always a need for us to intensify our communication and also our meetings. And I'm very happy to see Indonesia-Singapore cooperation continue to progress. I'm also very glad to see both countries' consistent effort to contribute to ASEAN, including in the current difficult situation. Colleagues from the media, there are two main takeaways from our meeting today. First, the discussion on the preparation of the uh, leaders' retreat, and then the second is on the exchange of views on regional and international issues. So let me start with the first takeaway from the meeting, that is the discussion on the preparation of the leaders' retreat. We agreed to propose to our leaders to have the in-person leaders' retreat in 2021. This annual meeting signifies the strategic importance of Indonesia-Singapore bilateral relation and provide a platform for both countries to chart the way forward on key areas of cooperation. This year, the key theme of our cooperation is how we recover together from the pandemic. And there are three issues to highlight. First is on the investment cooperation. Earlier this month, uh, Minister, the Minister of Trade and Industry, Minister Chan Chun Singh and I exchanged in instrument of ratification of bilateral investment treaty, which mark the entry into force of the Indonesia-Singapore BIT. Singapore is Indonesia's top investor. The FDI inflows from Singapore continues to increase despite the pandemic. We discussed that in 2020, there was more than 50% increase of the uh, investment from previous year. That is contributing more than 30% of the total FDI inflows to Indonesia last year. The BIT is hoped to promote greater investment flows through certainty and confidence. And this BIT also reflects our strong commitment toward an open and fair economic cooperation and signaling reinforced optimism for a swift economic recovery. So we do hope that the leaders' retreat will also provide further boost, boost for investment. Second is the, uh, we discussed the uh, cautious preparation for reviving travel and tourism sector. We exchange our views on the COVID situation in our countries, as well as progress in vaccination program for both countries. I explained to Minister Parakrishnan that as for now, Indonesia has vaccinated more than 9 million people. And my Minister of Health last week said that at one point, we had already reached 500,000 vaccination for a day. However, this good trend should not make us complacent. Instead, we have to work harder to recover together and to recover stronger. And we are very glad to have the Travel Corridor Arrangement, TCA, in place as tool to facilitate official and essential business travelers. And Indonesia hopes, Minister, that the TCA will continue to operate. So whilst continuing to follow closely developments with the pandemic, we note the communication on the possibility to have a pilot project 
on the reopening of our border for tourism purpose in a safe, gradual, and cautious manner. So I would like to repeat, in a safe, gradual, and cautious manner. So once again, health and safety of the travelers and the people are paramount, and we will continue to carry out this communication. And uh, you just finished also your conversation, your meeting with Minister for Tourism and Creative Economy during your visit to Jakarta. And then the third issue is on the digital economic uh, cooperation. I'm very pleased to note that Nongsa Digital Park in Batam has been granted the status of Special Economic Zone on 2nd of March 2021. And I'm very pleased to see our deeper cooperation in this area. As the largest digital economy in Southeast Asia, Indonesia has promising digital ecosystem. On the other hand, Singapore has the know-how and network to develop this sector. We have to bridge this potential. So our digital bridge is represented by Batam as the hub for data center and digital industry development in Indonesia. And with the designation of Nongsa Digital Park as special zone, Batam will become the entry point for international IT companies investing in Indonesia. Because digital cooperation will, uh, I think, will be also one of the main priorities areas to be discussed during the leaders retreat so that is the first uh, takeaways uh, of our meeting on the preparation for the leaders uh, retreat colleagues from the media the second takeaway from our meeting today was the discussion on a number of regional international issue we share our concern on the current situation in myanmar we also share our position to call on Myanmar military to stop the use of force and prevent further casualties. We also urge Myanmar to start dialogue to put democracy, peace, and stability back on track. Indonesia and Singapore also support the initiative to hold the ASEAN Leaders Summit uh, in the near future. Our goal to achieve an ASEAN community can only be achieved with the contribution of all ASEAN members. And last but not least, we also discussed the implementation of the ASEAN Outlook on the Indo-Pacific. I reiterated the importance of ASEAN to open for, communicate, for cooperation with all partners in pursuing the implementation of the Outlook. Inclusive cooperation is key in the outlook and we need a lot of positive energy to recover from this pandemic. Only by cooperation can we recover together and recover stronger. So with that, uh, Minister, I now would like to invite Minister Vivian to deliver his views. Pak Vivian, dipersilakan. Terima kasih. Terima kasih, Ibu Retno. It's a pleasure to be back in Jakarta, back in Kemlu, and to get to see you again. Although, of course, we've been in constant touch over the past few months. In fact, indeed, over the past one year. The last one year with COVID-19 has been a very challenging period for both Singapore and Indonesia. And I'm, the first point I want to make is that I believe we have shown to everyone that we have been good, steady and reliable partners throughout both good times and tough times. Uh, we've looked out for each other. You will recall even to the depths of the crisis, our supply chains continued. We were also able to help each other with respect to the tests for COVID, PPE, reagents and the rest of it. So the point is that we have gone through a crisis together we have successfully collaborated, we have saved lives, and we have helped to 
cushion the economic impact on our people together. So that's the first point, that our relations with Indonesia are very, very good and have stood, withstood a stress test. The next point I want to make is that if you look again at last year, despite all the challenges that we face, actually Kemlu and MFA had a very busy time. Mm. Uh, and just think through the agreements. As you mentioned just now, the Bilateral Investment Treaty, uh, you and my colleague, Minister Chan, have ratified it just a few days ago. In fact, uh, we have the Avoidance of Double Taxation Agreement awaiting ratification. And our central banks had also uh, renewed the bilateral financial arrangements. This is basically a US $10 billion arrangement to mutually stabilize our currencies during a time of crisis. So the point is that even while dealing with an emergency, we've been able to do substantive work. Now in the current situation as the numbers of infections in both Indonesia and Singapore are coming down, and as both of us are rolling out our national vaccination programs, this is also the time now to start planning and to collaborate on the post-COVID recovery. And that's where we've been sharing ideas, both between Kemlu and MFA, but also indeed at a whole of government level between all the other different ministries. And so the ideas which have uh, resulted will now be implemented in the months to come. I think on the economic front, you've outlined again the uh, good progress that has been made. Singapore remains the largest foreign investor in Indonesia. In fact, this is, I think, six years in a row. And last year, despite all the challenges, in fact, the FDI into Indonesia from Singapore went up by almost 50%. Um, it reflects a vote of confidence in Indonesia in the prospects for economic growth and confidence in Indonesia's future. And this happened even in a time of crisis. And with all the other agreements that we outlined just now, I expect this number to continue to grow. If you also think about the other projects that we've had, uh, the industrial park in Kandal, uh, that's going on well. And in fact, now we're going on to the point where we actually need to promote the development of a port to support Kandal industrial uh, development. Uh, you mentioned BBK. Uh, Ibu Retno, you will recall the two of us were actually in Batam, in Nongsa, when we were launching the digital town. Mm. I'm very proud to see that develop and that we actually now have a digital bridge from Singapore to Batam. And as globalization and as the digital revolution goes on, I see great, great prospects for that bridge to become a vibrant connector, right? electronic and human connector, mm -hmm. that will harvest opportunities for young people in both Singapore and in Indonesia. So that's on the economic front. On the tourism front, uh, you'll know that I just had a meeting with uh, Pa Uno, mm -hmm. and uh, we are looking that as the situation continues to improve, uh, to use your words, gradual and safe reopening of travel arrangements. And uh, again, we are looking at areas of mutual interest. And I think we, in our earlier discussion, we had looked particularly at Bintan. Uh, and perhaps that has been a site that for which we could convene our leaders' retreat. So the leaders' retreat will proceed this year. Watch out for the date but our two leaders will meet in person and they've got a full agenda uh, ahead of them. We also shared our views on regional uh, issues. Uh, we are both very distressed by the situation in Myanmar. I can say that uh, the position that both Indonesia and Singapore takes, I think are virtually identical. We are gravely concerned with the situation. We are distressed by the loss of human life. 
by the use of lethal arms on unarmed civilians, we both believe that national reconciliation needs to occur and can only occur if both sides actually sit down in good faith, negotiate and find a solution that works for Myanmar for the long term. Both Indonesia and Singapore also believe that there should be no foreign interference, but ASEAN stands ready to help in any way that we can help. And therefore, we also support uh, our leaders getting together to generate a common position in which ASEAN can express its support for Myanmar. So there's a lot of work that we need to do on that front to prepare for that ASEAN meeting. We also discussed, as you outlined, uh, ASEAN's centrality, unity and engagement with the other superpowers, as well as our dialogue partners and, uh, of course, how to operationalize the ASEAN outlook on the Indo-Pacific and focusing particularly on economic integration, on investments and win-win projects uh, across the entire ASEAN and, indeed, beyond. So there's a lot of, again, you see this another example where the two of us keep agreeing. I couldn't find anything to disagree with on that front. Uh, so all in all, I just want to summarize again by saying that we have, we are truly friends in need who have demonstrated reliability, trustworthiness. Indonesia and Singapore see the world strategically through very similar lenses. We have been able to work together uh, very closely, economically, people to people level. Uh, we've been able to sign agreements despite all our busyness and the future prospects for investments, for growth within Indonesia are very, very great. And Singapore uh, stands not just as an investor but as a vote of confidence in Indonesia's prospects for the future. So thank you again for this opportunity. Thank you. Makasih.